Hi, Hi, we're the Martinez, Martinez family. family. I'm Michelle. I am Sindo. We have three children. Sindo, who's nine. <laughs> Ashley, who's seven. Luda. <laughs> Mikey, who's six. <laughs> My husband Sindo is a civilian contractor working in Iraq. My wife, she's uh, basically a single parent because I'm gone all the time. And while I'm not here, she gets run over by the kids. Stop! Mm. Open the door, Sindo. Why? Because I asked you to. Or else what? So hostile in this house. When you, you're trying to raise kids and then you're worrying about your spouse, it takes a lot out. And I sit and cry and I lose it so easily. Get it cleaned okay. now. You two, quit. Get up and go eat now. Mum looks like she's just existing. At this point, I'm feeling like I'm lost. I am so stressed. I said, stop. Ow! Are you kicking me? No. Oh, my God. When their father left for the first time, that's when Ashley and Sindel's behavior started. Do <laughs> not try to headbutt me. Ashley's behavior in public is very out of control. She throws herself on the floor and throws a complete temper tantrum. I don't want it to get. <laughs> Will you break it? Look at these two going for it. Ashley, Mom. I'm gone for a period of five months, four to five months. When um, Sunday's away, it's. It's hard. I worry about my husband. I worry he's going to get killed. He's going to get hurt. I have a hard time when people ring the doorbell because you wonder if somebody's coming to the door to let you know your husband's been hurt or he's not coming home. That is enough. Super Nanny, I am about to leave to Iraq again. Please help my wife to uh, get a better control of the kids. Super Nanny, please help me. I'm at the end of my ropes, and I would love to have some peace and harmony in my house. Mom, I know you're desperate for help. Just hang on in there, because I am on my way. Hello. Hi. Hi. Pleased to meet you, Michelle. How are you? Good, very well, thank you. Hi, Mikey. Hi, you can say hello. Hi, pleased to meet you. Yeah. And how old are you? Six. You're six. When Joe first walked in the door, I was like, am I in a dream? Am I going to wake up? Is this real? Hi, Ashley, pleased to meet you. I'm Jojo. How are you? Okay. Hi, Sindo. Pleased to meet you. I'm Jojo. How are you? But I am going to really take note of what's going on here so that I can get to the bottom of things with you, OK? OK. When I first arrived at the Martinez household, I learnt that Dad had already been in Iraq for a month, which left Michelle to raise the kids single-handedly. And I could tell that emotionally, she just wasn't holding up. Ashley, turn the hell around and shut up! Knock it off. Keep it up, and you're going to get it. Knock it off! Look at me. I want you to zip the lip and do not say another thing. In the corner. In the corner. In the corner. Sendo, get in the other corner. After watching Mikey and Sindo get punished, I really felt that Mum's emotions were making her overreact. Turn around now. <laughs> <laughs> Mum dealt with her boys' behaviour, but it wasn't long after they were out of time out that she had to deal with her daughter Ashley's behaviour too. I got nine. No, you didn't. Yes! No. You had one. I have nine. No, you didn't. Yes! No. Yes! No. Yes! feel like I'm watching two kids. No, yes, no, yes, no. You're like, someone grow up and deal with this situation. All right, you're done. No. Get up and go to your room. My relationship with Ashley is um, kind of a rough road. No. Get up. Get up. No. Get up. No. 
<laughs> Mum chooses to vent her frustration and helplessness out on Ashley. All you want to do is scream and yell. So now guess what? You're going to have to sit in your room. <laughs> It's very difficult for mum to focus daily on raising the kids because she's constantly distracted with the worry of her husband being away. She wakes up in the morning waiting to receive an email from Sindo. She's waiting, waiting, and sometimes there's not an email there. But how does that feel like when you keep going on and, and then you look and there's nothing there? If I could get an email every day, it would make my day instead of whenever I can get it, you know. But I guess whenever I get an email, I should just be happy. To stay in touch with my husband, Sendo, it's very important to me. But the phone calls and the emails, sometimes there could be many days in between, and then, and then I start emailing him crazy, what's going on? You think you get used to it, but you don't get used to him being gone. It's like, like I go to bed and I wake up and I roll over and look, and I think he's there. Oh, it was just a dream. He's not there. It's challenging, and it gets very hard at times. Because I love him so much. Later that day, Michelle's son, Cinder Jr., spoke the truth about how he was treated. You and your man, he said, I don't like you. I don't like your behavior. No, you said, I don't like Yeah, you. I don't have to like you. I, have, I love you. So how do you feel then when mommy says that? It makes me mad and it makes me and it's sad. You feel sad because you think what? If he doesn't like us. Hearing the truth from Sindo Jr. leaves mum feeling really frustrated and distraught. No! You're not cutting it out. I will take the dang thing from you and throw it in the trash can. How's that? Yeah. Then stop! We have a mother that's lost control and she's taken her frustrations overboard on the kids when they misbehave. She shouts and she yells, and the kids respond back the same way. Pick all the paper up. Now! Ashley! Ashley, do not go in that basement and start cutting up. Ashley! The love of Pete! Ashley Marie! The way she reacts to the children shows me where she's at mentally. She's overwhelmed. She is at breaking point. She has no control. And she's falling apart at the seams. Michelle was still in tears, and she was back checking the emails when the phone started to ring. Hello? Hi, honey. Misha hasn't spoke to her husband for a while, and once Mum heard Sindo's voice, her whole mood changed dramatically. And I just realised that emotionally, she's on this roller coaster every day. Are the kids behaving? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you know the answer to that one. Mikey was throwing punches at Sindo. Oh, speaker. Yeah, Mikey. Mikey. Mikey, come here. Daddy. Phone. Yes, Daddy. Are you being mean to Bella? Yeah. You can't be mean. Hi, Cindo. It's Joe Frost here, Super Nanny. How you doing, ma'am? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Uh, I'm alive. I'm good. How frustrating is it for you being where you are? Being here, I can tell how kids behave. Oh, but that's just, we hang up. It's <laughs> cheesy again. Mum's at home with the three kids and dad's in Iraq working, and the emotional turmoil that they go through pulls on all of their hearts. And they're like thousands of other families at the moment. How worrying is it for you, knowing that you have a wife who is worried constantly about your safety? I can't put myself in her shoes, but I tell her not to worry about me. She's gotta worry about those three kids that are there. They depend on her. Well, I'm going to leave you to speak to me, show alone. Lovely to speak to you. Take care. Be safe. The calls are far and few between. But when he does call, it's important to me because I know when I answer that phone, he's alive and I know he's OK. <laughs> Daddy says group hug. Bye. Bye. Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Oh. <laughs> Love you. I miss you too. Bye.
during mum's phone call with dad, I could see there's certainly love in this house, but mum needs to bring joy to her family as well, and not just when dad calls. So how does that feel? Is that? It, it feels good to talk to him, to tell him I love him. Well, I'm going to leave you to get on with bath time then. OK. OK, I feel very encouraged about us sitting down tomorrow okay. and having a family meeting. And it was absolutely brilliant as well to be able to speak to Sindo. Highlight of my day exactly. today. You feel that sense of, ah, oh, I've spoke to him, it feels great. And then you start to roll down and emotionally. Do you feel yourself on that emotional roller coaster with him? Yes, it's like a very bad roller coaster that I would like to get off sometimes. Good night. Thank you. Children, good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. I feel for Michelle. Her anxiety is understandable in this situation, but it doesn't change the fact that her kids Hello. need their mum present. I really cannot wait to have this family meeting with Michelle. Michelle, let's get to the point. You have a husband who's in Iraq. He's home for four weeks out of a year. You have three beautiful children. You're raising them single-handedly. Yes, and it's scary. Right now, you're just existing. Everything evolves around getting that email from Dad. It makes your behavior irrational. You can't live on that nervous energy of, he may die tomorrow. We can't change the fact that your husband is in Iraq. But what we can do is take responsibility in what we need to do at home. That's why I want you here, to help me be a stronger person, instead of right now feeling like I'm very weak and I have no control of. Because the things that you're wanting control of, you have no control of right now. And that's not to say I don't understand. You and thousands and thousands of other women are in the same boat. I don't want you to feel apologetic for how you're feeling. You miss him, you love him. However, Michelle, the jeopardy is your kids. I'm willing to change it so I'm not a mess for my kids. So let's talk with clarity about the issues that I see that need to be addressed. OK. The way you respond to the kids is, is military. You start to yell, you scream, you show a loss of control. It's really harsh. And I don't want to do that anymore. It's about decisions and it's about how you choose to respond to the children. Learn how to manage your emotions, to not let it overwhelm you so that you start to become irrational. You're in charge. You're the mother of the house. They're your kids. Which brings me to the next point. Let's talk about discipline. You behave by trying to control the situation with discipline that's ineffective. Well, I mean, what's that doing? Nothing. Nothing. And at the end of the day, all you do is undermine yourself. You undermine yourself when you pick up the phone and you say, right, Dad wants to talk to you. What's Dad going to do? He's in Iraq. What is Dad going to do right Nothing. now? So the kid punches you, what's Dad going to do? Nothing. So the kids won't listen to you and pick up the toys from the floor, what's Dad going to do? Nothing. Right, what are you going to do? Nothing. Who's going to help the kids then? Nobody. He's how many miles away? I need to start making better choices. You need to have more respect for yourself and know that you shouldn't have to tolerate that behaviour and that you will be strong enough to take care of this and that you can do it. Uh, let's talk about the kids' activities and the things that they do. The energy needs to be more uplifted. To have their friends come round and to have a little tea party or to have them stay over would really just bring a lot of life into your house. It's fun. Recognise that regardless to you feeling emotional, that you have three kids that depend on you every day. Let's put our mind where it needs to be focused, okay? And let's cheer on ourselves, knuckle down, and let's change it, yeah? Yes. Right, let's get to work. It's really important to get Michelle feeling like she's in control. I know she gets anxious, but what I want her to do is to start to relax so we can implement some effective techniques. So the first thing we're going to do is put in some house rules. Listen, do as you're told. And by listening, we mean to stop what we're doing and to look at Mum when she's talking to us. Use your manners. Mikey, find a tissue when you're picking your nose. 
Now that the kids know the house rules, it's important for them to know the consequences should they break them. Mum will come down to your height and with a very low tone voice, she will say, stop that behaviour right now. If you chose not to be good and you carried on, you will end up on a naughty bench. I'm tired of all the yelling in my house. I think my mum's going to be calmer with the naughty bench in the house rules. What we are going to do this evening is we are going to go to the ice hockey practice and you are going to be aware of how you communicate, the words that you use and your tone of voice. Once we got to the hockey ring, we were watching Sindo practice and Ashley put Mum to the test. I want Papa. No. Ashley. Look at me. Look, Ashley. Ashley is really bad with tantrums, and if I could get that under control, I would take them more places. I would do more things. And I said, no. I thought it was about time to show Misha exactly how to handle Ashley out in public. Come here, right here, now. Stop that behavior, right now. If you carry on, you will sit right there. Do you understand me? in that corner. Now, you behave yourself. That's your warning. Off you go. It's your tone. She sees straight away that you're serious. If she's doing this, take her away. Come down. Eye contact. Tell her, all right? Because you've been in control. OK. After teaching Mum how to be firm but in control, Mikey wouldn't get off the ice, so Mum had more practice. You've already told Mikey twice, and he's not listening. So what are you going to now tell him? What should you be telling him? It's boundaries, it's rules. You disobeyed me. I asked you to stay off the ice, right? So I want you to go stand up against the wall. The more she gains control, the more she'll feel confident, and hopefully she'll lower the volume on her voice. Do you know why, you, why I put you in here? Because I asked you to stay off the ice, right? <laughs> It's a new step for me in discipline. It makes me feel good that I can have that certain tone with my voice and the kids listen to me. With Misha now feeling more confident, my next move was to show her that Dad is only a click away. So I had a little surprise for her. Um, so there is something that I do want to show you. I would like you to say hello to your husband. <laughs> <laughs> You can see you on this uh -huh. webcam. When I walked into the den and seen my husband's face on the computer, I was blown away. I was speechless. Wow, you look beautiful. I, I love you. I love you, too. I miss you. I miss you, too. With today's technology, it's really easy for families to stay in touch. With an inexpensive webcam and some free software, it was easy for Michelle and Sindo to feel connected. What I want you both to talk about is how you are going to support one another with being on the same page for when you come home. I'm going to correct the problems with myself, and I'm going to get the kids on track to a happier family. But you got to also agree to work with me well, I gotta follow the rules you got in place and support you more. With the webcam, I think it's gonna be a better way to communicate with him because we can all personally sit down and talk to him like he's sitting in front of us. So you wanna see your baby chickens? Ah uh, yes, please. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and up the kids came with their eyes closed, not knowing what they were going to see or, or hear. Okay, you come here. Yep. All right, open. <laughs> it was a lovely moment just being able to watch the kids talk to their dad and telling their silly jokes as they do. Can I get a group hug? <laughs> For him to say group hug and he was able to see it, I think that made his day and it made my day too that we could show him we're doing his group hug for him to put that smile on his face. Thank you. Oh, quit licking. So good when we all give a group hug. Now I can see my dad whenever I want. All right, big hug, big hug. <laughs> the 
the webcam is a really great idea because it will allow the whole family to see Sindo's face when he calls. But at the same time, I set up a web page for this family so each one of the children can feel that they're emotionally able to connect with their dad. This website has been designed for the whole of your family so that when dad logs on, he's able to be able to get personal messages from the kids. It's another way of being able to keep in contact with him but also to keep him updated with the things that's happening. It's all about tracking the behavior, the good things that are coming out of each day. To have this website and the kids being able to sit down and express whatever they're thinking at that moment to their father personally, I think it's gonna be a better way to communicate with him. Is that cool? We have our own website. We can type my dad letters and stuff. I feel a little closer to my dad than we were before. Now, if we click onto this next one here, you'll see that this is one of quite a few websites that allow us to connect with other parents who have a loved one being deployed. As you do sometimes think, well, there's nobody going through what I am. It's something new to have some communication with people who understand are going through what I am. You can share advice and feelings, and it helps you to not feel so alone in this situation. Right. As we all know, the internet has a wide range of resources for us, and we're taking advantage of that. The next day, it was time to put Mum to the test, so I came up with two big challenges for her to face, and the first one would be to take Ashley back out in public to see exactly how she would deal with that. Ashley, come back here. When we pulled up to the bounce house, I was like, oh, no. I just thought we're going to go in there, and she's not going to want to leave. So I was a bit scared that she was going to flip out. It was, it was fun. It was, the kids loved it. I loved it. I loved being able to get out there and play with them. Woo! It was a unique experience. Ready? Ashley was having so much fun that Mum thought she might throw a fit when it was time to leave. So I decided to arm Mum with some tips to avoid this. We're going to be the speaking clock, all right? So we give them a warning always, OK? The speaking clock. Give them a time in which everything's going to wrap up when we're going to leave. Halfway through, remind them of that time. Ashley, you have six minutes and we're leaving. When Joe told me it was time to start doing the countdown and start rounding up the kids, I thought, oh, this is not going to go over well. Ashley, three more minutes. Ashley, three more minutes. She just ran off. We got down to the three-minute mark, and I told them, Ashley ran from me. I was like, it's going to be bad, and I'm going to be embarrassed. Yeah, get yourself ready, and then at least then, they're not never waiting for you. When the time is up to make sure that she's ready first, and then able to click the kids all together. Ashley, it's time to go. I was very nervous about telling Ashley if we're gonna be leaving. I was waiting for an eruption of a tantrum. It's time to go. Let's go. Can I come here tomorrow? We'll come back another day. Reassure the children that they are gonna come back another time and enjoy themselves. If the ultimate happens, where they do end up having a meltdown, take the child by the hand and remove them from that circumstance, shoes and socks and all. You rounded them all up, and then you gave them expectations for their behavior that you wanted to see. And we have three kids with their coats and hats on and ready to go. And no temper tantrum. You did well. <laughs> Thank you. That worked well. Oh, my. She didn't have a tantrum, and it felt good not to drag her out of there kicking and screaming. And it was a big relief that, wow, you know, we can do these things now. You did very good today. Hello. Hello. Someone's having a party tonight. Oh. The bounce house was a big success. But the next challenge may prove itself to be a little bit more difficult for Michelle. I wanted to throw a party to see if Mum could remain calm with not one, not two, but five extra kids in her house. Yeah! 
<laughs> the kids were dead excited. And they got hold of the streamers and they started to throw those up in the air so that it would look decorative in the sitting room. Remove your glassware and place it up above because, you know, accidents do happen, so... Setting up for the party and decorating and that, it was it, it felt kind of good. And then the doorbell started ringing and the kids were coming in. I'm like, what did I get myself into? Yeah, I was gone. I would lock the door so, you know, you've got everyone in safe. And I would give some ground rules. For Mum to feel like she can manage all of these kids in her house, it's going to be really important for Mum to lay down some rules for these kids so they know exactly what's expected of them. Can I have everybody's attention? I have locked the door, so that means I don't want anybody going outside. I don't want anybody being mean to each other. I want everybody to have fun yeah, and enjoy nice. themselves, OK? With eight kids partying in her house, the question would be, could Michelle stay in control? <laughs> I had a hard time handling three kids. And to have this party and have eight kids, I was a nervous wreck because if they have eight kids running amok in your house. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Everything went pop and shattered. And when the lamp broke, I thought, this is it. How is Mum going to react to this? I got scared when I hit a light and it burnt out and shattered on the ground. It's OK. You're it's OK. It's an accident. I thought my mom was going to yell at me, but she was calm. It's OK. It was an accident. It's fine. It can be fixed, OK? It feels good now to say, let it go. It's a mess. It can be cleaned up. <laughs> All better. Huh? For me, not to overreact when Cindy broke that lamp proved to me that she really had moved on a long way from where we were before. <laughs> Yellow. I think it was very rewarding for Mum to see her kids so happy with their friends. She was really having a lot of fun. <laughs> Mikey. It's been a long time since I've laughed and enjoyed having fun with the kids and just letting loose. It's been a long time since we had fun in our house. I want to do that more often. Oh, yeah! Come on, give me the rest! Give me the rest! really fun. Yes, it's just I'm kind of I'm, emotional. I'm starting to feel better about myself, that I can better handle situations, so it feels so good to cry of joy instead of being sad. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to the point where I can start having the best relationship with my kids, and mm -hmm. my heart is just, like, ready to burst because it's so ex I'm so ecstatic mm -hmm. right That's now. That's a good thing. I'm so <laughs> ecstatic. Mum's done really well whilst I've been there, but I'm going away for a few days, so it's going to be really important that Mum keeps relaxed because if she doesn't, it could just start to tumble down. Enjoy your evening. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. After being away from the family for three days, I was certainly anxious to see how this family had got on without me. So I'm here for you to watch. I'm very curious to take a look at this with you so that we can see exactly where we need to put you on track and where you've done well. Let's start with the first one here. Hour and a time. All right. Do you know I don't know. Go in there and let me see. You did. Let's see mine. It says, hello, big boy. Listen and help mama, please. Good luck in the game. And remember, as long as you have fun playing, you have won. Love you. You can have an outlet with daddy, and he understands. You like this now, huh? Yeah. Even though Sindo is thousands of miles away, you've got young Sindo here expressing how he's feeling. He's still having that father-son yeah, bonding. Yeah, And it gives them the privacy of having those intimate conversations because he will respond separately rather than the big family email. Right. That's perfect. That's perfect. Here's your warning. You keep your hands to yourself and your not so nice words. Yeah, I love it, I gave you a warning about the nasty words coming out of your mouth. 
So you now you know what the consequences are. Back. Yes, come on, let's go. I put you on the naughty bench because I warned you about the not nice words, right? Right? Yeah. Sorry, Mama. It was wonderfully executed there, though. It really was. You did very well. You kept your composure. You were very calm. You followed the steps. And usually, no when I when I, if I would have put him in a timeout, the screaming, I'd be like, "Oh, just knock it off. Be quiet." Yes. You didn't yell. You just kept your composure. That's what I'm talking about. That's brilliant. I need you to go upstairs and brush your teeth. I know you didn't brush them this morning, and you need to get them brushed, OK? Can you go brush your teeth for me, please? No. Please. <laughs> you need to go brush your teeth. That's for baby. That's my own teeth for You think the tooth fairy wants rotten, nasty-looking teeth? You won't get no money. No. Now brush them teeth. Here. Uh. Get them brushed. He's trying to make his teeth bad on purpose. I'm oh, trying to get him over that whole thing. Well, if my teeth fall out, then he'll get money from the tooth fairy. And that's why I told him the tooth fairy doesn't want nasty, gross looking teeth. So we need to set the story straight here. Okay. With, with the teeth. Okay. okay. Hang on a minute, guys, please. Mikey, where is your finger? Oh, look at him. I have never seen him do that. Oh, are you kidding me? Serious? I seriously need to buckle down. Look, you the, the kids do need to learn about manners and to be able to refrain from this kind of behavior because that isn't good at all. Okay, we're gonna take a look here at Sindo's behavior and how he talks to you. You ready, Flubber? What did you call me? Look at that Flubber at his butt. Look at that Flubber right there. Look at that Flubber right there. Be nice. You look like a witch. Just say that. You look like an old lady. Because you're trying to hide the greatness. Be kind and respectful to another. Are you being kind and respecting me right now? There is a way in which one can talk that's tactful and not. Okay. And teaching Sindo how to be respectful is key here. Because he's being disrespectful. It's boundaries. It's boundaries. Let me tell you something. You have done remarkably well, and you have come a very long way. A very long way. But we are on a long road here. Let's not forget that. We need to take care of that last bit to take you to that next level. So can I take this, and can we get on with some work? Yes. Good. definitely under control. I knew that I could move on to teaching this family some simple basics. Watching the DVD led me to quiz these children on manners. First one is this. Mikey can't keep his fingers out of his <laughs> nose. <laughs> what does he need? <laughs> Mikey. Mikey. A tissue, yes. One for you. Remember it, OK? <laughs> Of course, they know their manners. They just choose to be slack when it suits them. But it was good. I was animated. The kids laughed and joked about it. And let's face it, they knew a lot. Sindo starts calling you, oh, that word, flubber. Sindo, what should Mum do? Give me a warning, because I'm calling her flubber, and there's no one of the girls are no name calling. Yeah, so is that right or wrong, what you did? Wrong. For my kids to answer those questions right, I was like, oh, they get it. Looks like you all know. We won. Yes, you did. Give me five. Yes, you did. You passed the test. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Yeah. I think the kids have got the gist when it comes to manners. But there's still one issue I do need to address, and that's teeth brushing. We brush twice a day. We get our toothbrush. We angle it. We brush in round <laughs> motions. Jojo is so fun, I can laugh. When our big teeth do push through and we lose our baby teeth, Mikey, who comes along and takes that too? Tooth fairy. Yeah. Mikey's under the impression that the tooth fairy takes decayed teeth. See, 
you not wanting to brush your teeth because you want the tooth fairy to take it, the tooth fairy will know. I'd make it like this. He was thinking in his head, I need to make smart choices because the tooth fairy's going to find out. The tooth fairy said, I'm not going to take that tooth because that didn't fall out naturally. My kids really do now get it, that it's important. And it's not just about the tooth fairy. Before it was time for me to leave, we sat down in front of the webcam and I gave Dad a detailed report on how well his family were doing. Is that ever kids? It's like, you know what? It, it also gave the kids a chance to goof around and have some fun with Dad. Daddy, listen, listen, listen. Daddy, I need to tell you something. After, let me have two minutes with you. Ah, we not. All right, listen, you guys can say what you have to say. Give Mama a couple minutes, OK? So she gave them a clear warning about their behaviour and told them they would leave if they misbehaved. But Ashley didn't like being told off and she went to the sofas to sulk for a while. Go, go. It's just, no. At the end, listen, and I told you. Go. At the end. She'll be fine. Ashley was mad, but you know, to handle it the way I did, it felt good to let Ashley know, hey, I'm the one in control. You don't have control. What I say goes. But as you see, I'm getting better at handling them and dealing with everything a lot better. And there's the yelling's gone. So when you get home, there's no yelling, Daddy. I know. I was ecstatic for Sendel to see that I'm taking charge now. They're listening, their behavior, because now he can see, well, my wife is going to kick some butt. So would you say that you have more peace of mind now? Yeah, she's a whole lot stronger. We're dealing with the kids, dealing with situations. I think she can handle it a whole lot better right now. Sindara, I just wanted to say that it's been a pleasure meeting you, sir, and it's been a pleasure working with your family. God bless. Take care. I'm going to leave you with Michelle. Yeah. I think Joe has given my husband peace of mind that he knows that his family is going to stick together and hold together and not fall apart. See, but the thing is, I'm loving this. The silence of no yelling, and there's a peace. The peace and love and harmony is floating in the air, without all the screaming, and, and I like this. The kids have recognized that it's their mum who's holding the fort in their home and raising them with reassurance and love. Bye, Jojo. Jojo, you best. She said she's going with you. Are you going with me? Yeah. You're going with me? Yeah. You can't go with me. <laughs> Thank you for helping my family. I'm going to miss you, Jojo. Take care. I will. Look. Yes. Proud of you. Thank you. Proud of you. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye, darling. Bye bye. Bye bye. You take care, okay? It's written on the wall peace, love, and harmony. Michelle wanted that. Michelle created it. This family have it.